They're really drug and alcohol clinics, but inside these clinics, they treat homosexuals, lesbians, transsexuals, transgender people. So they are usually taken against their will. My name is Paola Paredes. I am a visual storyteller, a visual artist, a photographer. I am a queer lesbian woman from Ecuador. My photographic series, Until You Change, is a very complex social subject matter. In Ecuador, there are conversion clinics, unfortunately. They're really drug and alcohol clinics, but inside these clinics, they treat homosexuals, lesbians, transsexuals, transgender people, so they are usually taken against their will. So Until You Change is, is a series of images that talk about and show what goes on inside these clinics. I interviewed a survivor during six months, and with her testimony and three other testimonies, I recreated images of what goes on in these places. These practices are illegal, so there is no way any clinic would have allowed me to go inside and do direct documentation. So I had to find other creative means to, to portray. Inside these centers, they have this mentality to cure anything that deviates from Catholic and conservative norm. These places are so hard to close because they're under the disguise of alcohol and drug clinics. Sometimes these clinics are known to have been funded by other evangelical groups in the States and in Europe. That's why they're so easy to open and maintain because they can cost from $500 to $1,200 a month. And since they're so lucrative, sometimes they're schemes of corruption. There's also a lot of human rights problems inside these clinics because the people who are there are submitted to torture, being tied down, being hit by wires, being forced to put your hand down the toilet if you didn't clean it well, insomnia, rape. I had to do acting training because we shot it like a movie and I thought it would be myself a good idea because I am queer, lesbian, and in many times I was afraid to end up in one of these clinics. I felt the need to visually represent it. And that was true because when I published this series, I became viral here in Ecuador and it got so much attention and I was very much invited to go to these places like government places to talk about my research so that was very important and all the pieces of journalism images made a lot of a difference because people could see even if they were recreations and it opened a lot of discussions so I think that's like the power behind imagery and photography which is also one of the, my desires to, to make this series. So yeah, it was a very, very hard series to make. It had a lot of creative technical challenges, but it was very rewarding at the same time. To portray this story was really hard and I had a big responsibility on my shoulders because I was portraying not only Anna's story, but so many survivors. And I was exhausted because it's kind of like method acting where I became Anna, going into these very dark mentalities of violence and trauma. So it did affect me a lot psychologically. I was exhausted, I was emotionally drained, and I was really sad. And I remember entering into these very dark depression of being confused also of my reality of who I was. It was very hard. Also, there was so much that I learned from this project that made me a better photographer, a better artist, a better researcher, a better interviewer that have taken me to where I am now. In this image, one of the testimonies that I was told is that at 7.30 a.m. they are forced to wear red lipstick and makeup and they're observed by the female therapist. And this is done so that in case they're lesbians, females can become a real woman. So this is a ridiculous practice that takes on every day. And so I wanted to represent that because I thought it was very telling of the mentality and how conservative and also how ridiculous. One of the testimonies is that they are supposed to clean the clinics um, every day. She was telling me that on one specific occasion, she had not cleaned it correctly and the punishment um, was that the male therapist had completely forced her body 
in her arm inside the toilet, just as a form of discipline. And she was screaming and she felt completely humiliated and that her body hurt. So we did this scene, recreated it, it was very uncomfortable. It was extremely demeaning. So I can understand how that felt. This is actually one of my favorite images. It was a very cinematic image that portrays something very, very horrific. Survivors talk a lot about insomnia and talk a lot about laying down when they would have free time or they were able to lay down and just feeling lost and feeling the end of the world and feeling completely in so much pain and not wanting to be there. And so I wanted to do a mid shot in which I would be laying down portraying these emotions, looking into the empty void of my thoughts and feeling completely lost. I used these old bed sheets that my grandma has and just working on an expression that looks like I'm lost into my thoughts. I thought it was impossible to make this project. There were so many problems, but then it became possible and then I managed to do it and it had an impact on survivors they said, this is amazing. You really managed to represent what we went through to the point of the horror. So I do think that it had an impact and I'm always be very, very grateful for that.